tonight we start the new year with the undisputed middleweight champion of the world, marvelous Marvin Hagler, against the hopeful Brighton by the name of Tony Simpson. Ray Leonard, one interesting thing that has been bandied about in both camps, the fact that Tony Simpson for the last two weeks has not been in the ring with anybody who hits back. He has not had a sparring session in over two weeks. Very unusual. Well, none of that creates uh, dullness in the ring. You're not as sharp, your timing is off. But if he didn't abandon his regular training regimen, Things should be as normal as Marvin Hagler less than be. Well, the biggest question, of course, being asked in all corners is, who is Tony Simpson? Well, Tony Simpson is a guy who's been a straight-ahead fighter. We know that. We also know he's got to change his style this time. We got some of the answers from our own Reg Gutridge in England. This is Leicester, England. It's approximately 100 miles from London, and it's known for its quaint village houses and it's fox hunting, and also the home of Tony Simpson, the number one ranked world middleweight contender. Hello, I'm Reg Guttridge, and I've covered the fight scene here for well over half a century, but that really isn't that long when you think that the fight game started here approximately 260 years ago. James Figg, known as the father of boxing, was the sport's first champion in 1719. It is with Figg that the art and science of modern boxing begins. In 1743, Jack Broughton introduced the sport its first rules and gloves. In 1866, John Shelton Douglas, the eighth Marquis of Freensbury, revolutionized boxing with a set of regulations that created the sport we know today. We English have taken pride in many boxers. Some of our most recent champions have been Henry Cooper, our Henry as most of us know him today, will never be forgotten for his knockdown of the then Cassius Clay. Alan Minter, the British Bulldog who defeated Vito Antofermo to become our last world champion. Our present hero, Tony Simpson, or Sibbo as his fans like to chant, defeated Matteo Salvamini to become the European middleweight champion. After 10 years, boxing would become more than just a pastime, it would be his life. I'm not, I'm not, I don't have to dramatise my life, I, I just come from a working class family. And uh, that uh, I know that uh, if I want to get on in life, this is the only way for me. But before Tony would receive his deserved recognition, there had to be one more fight. In England, it was billed the showdown. Tony Simpson, the up-and-coming boxer, versus the veteran and ex-world champion, Alan Minter. Once a sparring partner for Minter, Tony Simpson lived many years in the shadow of England's pride. In 1980, Minter lost his title to Marvin Hagler in the third round of this ring. One year later, the third round marked the end of the career of one English champ and the beginning of a dream of another Englishman. I think it was a right hand and I thought he broke his nose and broke his heart. But Tony's heart was also broke. Due to an advertisement on Minter's trunk, the fight was blacked out by the BBC. Explain to me why you were so disappointed that the fight with Alan Minter was blacked out by the BBC in Britain. Everyone was saying, oh, I've got no chance. But then when I beat him and done the job I did do on him, it was robbed of me that the public never seen that, and that was a shame. Dwight Davison was Simpson's final obstacle to a title shot. Versus the number one ranked contender, Tony Simpson earned a unanimous decision and the opportunity to once again bring a world title back to England. Only in England would you find a boxer who trains at a pub. The Queen Vic gym is located behind the Queen Victoria pub. To concentrate solely on Marvin Hagler, Tony vacated his British and European titles. Since November 23rd, he has dedicated all his time to training with three daily workouts every day except Sundays. He beholds the courage that is found in many English boxers. Its origin could be linked to King Richard I, whose courage in battle won him the title of Richard the Lionhearted. Henry Cooper, known as the Bleeder, never gave up a fight. Courage. Well, I think we, oh yes, I think, you know, a lot of British fighters have got a game, you know, and if you're talking about game, art, call it what you want, bottle, as they say, I mean, yeah, oh, we were as brave, I think, as the Americans. There's not too many Englishmen that get to fight for championships of the world, and I think when they reach that class, it's their determination that, that comes through in the end. Pat Caldell from Warley, England, had his title shot versus Salvador Sanchez. Badly beaten for 15 rounds, Caldell still had the courage to rise from the canvas with seconds remaining. In this fight, Tony Simpson will exhibit the same heart and determination. I just want to get in there and become a champion. And uh, you, if you've got an attitude in life that you want to win, then you've got to, you've got to fight for that state. That status, you? you know, no one's going to give you nothing in life, so uh, 
You've got to fight for every piece of the action you can. Slightly over 200 years ago, our pilgrim forefathers set across the Atlantic in search of a new world. Tony Simpson's pilgrim voyage will be to Worcester, Massachusetts, only 80 miles from Plymouth Rock. But Tony's dream is not in search of a new world, his dream is to become champion of the world. Well, if you'd like to know realistically what an English middleweight's chances of winning the title in the United States are, Bob Fitzsimmons beat the original Jack Dempsey back in 1891. After that, it was 89 years before Alan Minter beat Vito Antifermo in Las Vegas. With his own thoughts on the night's fight, here's Larry Merchant. Larry? Tony Simpson, Tony the Lionhearted, is not your basic British fighter. Your basic British fighter marches into battle the way the Redskins, Redcoats did a few miles down the road from here, with their chins held high, with their Redcoats formed <laughs> behind their muskets. The musket for a British fighter is his jab, and he hangs his chin out there as though it has a red coat on it, an inviting target. Tony Simpson only occasionally assumes that stance because it is, after all, about as British as kidney pie. But he got here for the most part because he fights like a Yank. He's aggressive, he's tough, he's strong, and they say he's really a good puncher. The problem for him going into this fight is that the Yank usually comes out on top. But what we can know for sure right now is not the result. What we can know is that Tony the Lionhearted has never in his life gotten into the ring with anyone like Marvin the Lionhearted. Marvelous Marvin Hagler, the undisputed middleweight champion of the world. He earned that title on September 27, 1980, when he fought the champion, Alan Minter, in a hostile Wembley Arena in London. It was a bloody third-round knockout, and after a long eight years in the ring, Marvelous Marvin Hagler was a champion. Four months later, his first title defense was against little-known Fulgencio Obel Mejias in the friendly confines of the Boston Garden. The Venezuelan was dropped by a hard shot in the sixth. And finally, Marvin's mystery guest was stopped for sure in the eighth round. On June 13th of 1981, Marvelous Marvin was out for revenge with Vito Antifermo. There were pre-fight controversies and post-fight charges by the challenger of an intentional butt by Hagler in the fourth round. But clearly, the aging former champion was no match for Hagler's lightning combination. On October 3rd of 1981, the undisputed champion met a tough Mustafa Hamsho. Hagler was as accurate with his fierce combinations as he had ever been, consistently piercing Hamsho's defense. Finally, the challenger could endure no more. Marvelous Marvin Hagler stopped him in 11, his third and longest title defense. His last bout was on October 30th of 1982. Again, the opponent was Fulgencio Obel Mejias. Before the fight, Hagler preached that he was tired of looking at Obel's face. So in the fifth round, he delivered the most devastating right hand of his pro career. So today, marvelous Marvin Hagler stands alone as the most celebrated fighter in the world. Since Ray Leonard's retirement, many people have looked to marvelous Marvin Hagler to accept a leadership role in the sport. I asked him about that challenge. Well, to put it straightfully, you know, that's not the way I kind of wanted it. Uh, I would love to see Ray and myself fought, and then it would have been determined. Uh, but uh, the other hand that I feel is though that I've always been there anyway, and just that you had somebody that was a little bit more colorful maybe, but, uh, you know, I was always right there. Marvin, it seems that with every fight, people are saying, this guy's a pushover, this guy's not going to be any problem for marvelous Marvin Hagler. Does it ever get to bother you? Yeah, it does. You know, what they try to do is they try to bring down, uh, bring you down a little bit, you know, and get you to relax and whatever. And you, you can't relax out there because it only takes a second, you know. And uh, so I don't listen to that kind of talk. I don't run around with a bunch of entourage people who's patting me on the back, telling me how great I am. I have all the confidence in myself knowing the job that I have to do, so uh, it's not bothering me at all. When we were in San Remo, we sat and talked, and you said, it makes no difference where I fight. 5,000 miles from home doesn't make any difference. Here are the shoes on the other foot, 14,000 people who are marvelous Marvin Hagler fans. 
Yeah, well, it won't to me because, I mean, well, it's there. It's nice to be there and have that type of support. But uh, in myself, too, uh, you know, it can be bad for you, all the people rooting for you. So I'm just going to uh, isolate the people and uh, just concentrate on one thing, what I've been training for, and that's for Tony Simpson. And so what's left is to get on with it now. Marvelous Marvin Hagler. Should point out, Marvelous Marvin Hagler is his given name now. He had his name legally changed. So Marvelous is very much a part of it. Bob Arum has said, in regard to the fact that he sold out this house in 24 hours, that Marvin Hagler has finally arrived as an American hero. And Marvin, in response to that, he said, now they're putting Sugar Ray Leonard's crown on my head. He said, I've already got enough headaches. <laughs> I think one of the big questions, Larry Merchant, that we're going to have to ask here is how is Tony Simpson going to fight this fight? He's fought his best fights when he's come right at the man, and I don't think there's any question but that he cannot do that with Marvin Hagler. Well, it can be done if it's done resourcefully enough. There's one theory that the best way to fight a fighter who comes at you is to go at him and back him up. Marvin Hagler has never had to back up much. He's never fought a guy who appears to be stronger than him as we look at them. So that may be a good strategy if he can stay on top of Hagler. One thing that really did scare me a little bit in reading some of the write-ups of Tony Simpson's history, he said he really admired Mustafa Hamshow because he did come at Marvin Hagler. He said that showed a lot of character. Character, unfortunately, doesn't win prize fights as a rule. Hamshow had 60 stitches. And Marvin Hagler has now come into the ring here to the delight of the 14,000 people in the Centrum in Worcester. How well has Marvin Hagler been doing as a champion? Well, he's been doing pretty well by and large, but he has now won 30 straight since losing a pair of fights to Boogaloo Watts and Willie the Worm Monroe. 55, 2 and 2, 46 of those coming by knockouts. And he himself says, since I've been champion, Ray, I'm getting meaner. Well, he's worked so hard to get in the position to be the undisputed middleweight champion. And Hag is a very proud champion, Barry. And the fact is, it's going to be very, very difficult for Simpson to really take that from him. I think the general can Tony Simpson, as you look at, 47-3 and 1. He's had 27 knockouts. He's been knocked out only once. That, when he really fought a light heavyweight, Lottie Mawale, he was told, go out there, set him up, get him right now. He went after him and got nailed in the first round. Here's the tail of the tape. And Larry Merchant, a couple of interesting numbers jumping out here. Yes, uh, one is uh, Hagler's age. He, he is now officially 28. Uh, he says that he got into professional boxing at an early age, and he had to uh, use false documents so that he's 28. But the, the more important is the reach. He's got a big, big reach advantage, which is all unusual for him, six and a half inches, and the chest. Just look at the size of Simpson's chest compared to Hagler. Simpson is a big, strong fellow. It really is built very much like a weightlifter. Here are the common opponents of these two. There is not a lot to tell here, with the possible exception of Kevin Finnegan, who Marvin Hagler knocked out on two occasions, and Tony Simpson was a loser to in 15 rounds, and they did fight them roughly at the same time. Each man, however, has come a long way in his career since then, despite the fact that Marvin Hagler did knock out Finnegan on two oh, occasions. Shit. Right now, let's go oh, up for the ring announcer, Nuno Cam, for the introduction oh, of the two fighters. Oh, shit. Good evening, ladies and What's gentlemen. Going on? What's going on? The feature attraction of the uh, evening for the right. middleweight championship of the world, 15 rounds. Here at the new and beautiful Centrum in Worcester, Massachusetts, promoted by top rank Bob Arum and Rip Valenti Boston. Also in celebration of the 20th anniversary of the WBC. Tonight's boxing is under the supervision of the Massachusetts State Boxing Commission. Chairman Tommy Rawson, Jimmy McCarron, and Joe Tetchy. Judges for the championship bout, Tony Perez, New York, and San Juan, Puerto Rico, and Marcella Bettini of Italy, and referee Carlos Padilla from Las Vegas and the Philippines. Timekeeper George DeFilippo 
counting for the knockdowns, Jerry Albano, attending physicians at the ringside, Dr. William Dorfman, and Dr. A.P. Blumenthal. So there you have the incidentals. If confidence wins fights, Tony Simpson, Simpson should be a deadlock cinch. He's the most confident fighter and as loose, Ray, as any challenger I've ever seen. I saw him in a hotel lobby at 3 o'clock today. He was chatting with people. Just very loose. Well, that attitude, it, it helps you, but you need some artillery, too. Instructions now from Carlos Padilla. Okay, you're going to box for 15 rounds. You know the rules of boxing. Avoid using any kinds of foul. Don't throw any punches during the break. Okay, seconds come out fighting. Seconds come out fighting. Marvin Hagler, of course, does not shake hands before a fight. It is not any kind of a hostility. It is just merely the way he does business. There are some similarities between these two, incidentally, oddly enough. They're both from medium-sized towns. Hagler from Brockton, by way of Newark. Simpson from Leicester, England. Both were hog carriers in the early days. Both turned pro at the earliest age that they possibly could. They both raise animals. Hagler raises pigeons. Simpson raises dogs. They both beat Alan Minter handily. Both were soft paws, and of course, Hagler still is, although he can go both ways. First round. Quick jab was, by Hagler. He was still a great deal of boxing skill from uh, Marvin, up until he's able to hurt Simpson, and then he'll get very mean and start taking advantage of it. Hagler very sharp early on here. Marvin Hagler not one to waste a lot of punches. Hagler very much up-tempo early in the round. What's going to be a fact in this fight, Barry, is the fact that Marvin Hagler has a very good right jab, very powerful. It sets his man up so well. Uh, two good shots from Hagler snapped the head of Tony Simpson back there. Simpson, tough customer. Simpson beat Dwight Davidson by getting inside and keeping his head on Davidson's chest. However, Davidson is 6'1". Marvin Hagler, considerably shorter. It'll be much more difficult for Tony Simpson to fight the fight against Marvin Hagler than he fought against Dwight Davidson, the number one contender at the time. You notice that combination thrown by Marvin Hagler. Double right jab and come with the left, uh, straight left hand. Those are the type of combinations that's going to do a great deal of damage to Tony Simpson. The mistake that Simpson is making is the fact he's following, actually following uh, Hagler. He needs to cut the ring off. Give a little more head face, body face. He can't walk straight into Hagler. If so, he'll nail you every time with those straight left hands. Marvin Hagler scores with an inordinate number of punches. He just does not waste a lot of punches. And the left hand by Simpson is first of the night. Simpson's waiting for an opportunity to get inside because he's more effective inside throwing those big shots to the body to the head. And Hagler's not going to cooperate with him. going to keep him on the outside of that right jab. That's a good right-hand lead by Marvin Hagler. Hagler will go from softball to righty. He's not done yet, that, yet tonight, but he will do it at some point. Simpson has fought 15 softballs, so this is nothing new to him. You see there, Simpson went to the body. Inside, once again, he's very, very strong. Tony Simpson content to fight at long range in the first round, and that is a different tactic for him. Another good thing, if Simpson can maintain this pace, this is a very fast pace for any fighter. And if he can maintain this and score some, score some, score some punches, he might see a change. Well, Mickey Duff, the British promoter, has said in no uncertain terms that Tony Simpson is the best one-punch middleweight that he's ever seen. All right, let's listen in Marvin Hagler's corner. What Hagler established in that round was that Simpson is going to have to pay a price 
to get close to him. Right distance is the good. question is whether that price will be too heavy as the Jake fight goes up. on. Jake up the school. Right up here. Right in the money. Just enough distance, too. You're moving just right. Right? Good job, Let's take a look at the combination punching of Hagler. The right lands. The left is a little bit high, but he comes right back with another right. He's making Simpson respect him at this point in the fight. But Simpson came out all right. Let's see how he does in this round. Very much of an up-tempo first round, and we'll see if that pace continues here in round two. Hagler was short, and Simpson took it all. Simpson not likely to cut. He's only been cut once. And that was just a minor cut over the bridge of his nose. Never been cut around the eyes. For Hagler, again, that jab is going to be the factor in this fight. Keeping this, keeping Simpson outside in the center of the ring. Against the ropes, then you give Simpson a chance. Simpson trying to get inside a little bit more early in the second round. Hagler still very sharp. You notice what Hagler's doing. He's going to the body, he fakes, and comes back to the head. He, in other words, he's changing his punches up. Confuses the fight, he's not doing the same thing over. There was an uppercut lead, that hurt Simpson. And it wasn't only the uppercut, Hagler came back with two punches behind it. Always throws punches in combinations when he thinks his man might be hurt. with a good uppercut. You see Simpson now is giving more body feints. Hagner lunging just a little bit off balance that time. Simpson, I notice he has very good movement, very good balance. In oh, fact, oh, when Hagler comes in, he backs away. But one thing to keep in mind, Simpson maintains his balance and comes back. Another punch you might see Hagler throw is that upward right jab. It comes from the waist. Punch caught the shoulder of Simpson going away. The crowd will give you an indication because it is so supportive of Marvin Hagler that perhaps some punches are a little bit more than they really are. With a fight like Simpson, you just, you have to be able to box and punch because it's very difficult to just walk in there and start punching, exchanging blows. Well, the British press kept saying during the course of this week that you will see a different Tony Simpson. He won't fight the type of fight that he did against Dwight Davidson and against some of the others who he felt he could come at. Let's go into Simpson's corner now. You're in distance, You've got to back him up. You understand? This side, Tony. Let's take a look at Hagler here as he lands a good right hand. Straight left followed by the right hand. Putting his punches together, following up on what he does. That's the sign of a good fighter. We're really seeing the versatility of Marvin Hagler here. His ability to box is vastly underrated. One thing that Simpson is doing too much is assuming that British attitude of having his head too straight and too high on too many occasions. There is a little bit of puffiness on the face of Tony Simpson. It's nothing in the least bit serious at this juncture, the third round. Hagler more and more looks the part of the consummate professional. It's very difficult to fight a southpaw because of an orthodox style. The key to it is keeping that your left foot 
outside of his right foot. And Simpson's doing a pretty good job of that. While he's inside, he gets off balance, and the southpaw is able to connect. Simpson's corner, you might have heard, exhorting him to back him up, back him up. Also notice that Tony Simpson has a tendency in his corner to listen to Mickey Duff, who's an advisor, perhaps even more than the man in the ring. Simpson's really rough inside, bro. He gets inside and uh, he tries to outmuscle his opponent. But you know, as Hagler, well, he doesn't want to uh, exchange. He'll tie his man up, back away, and start boxing again. Saw a little bit of a butt there, but there was no damage caused by that butt. Carlos Padilla saying, Watch your heads. talking about bro it comes up it's very effective he threw he, he tried again he tried again but this was ready for it still a very quick tempo to this fight holding hold it hold it bring it up perfect fight. I mean, he's, he's out boxing Simpson, and Simpson's, again, he's fighting a perfect fight also. He's doing the correct thing. Getting inside, working, and trying to slow Hagler down. Slow down that movement. Hagler with three punches that all scored right on the face of Tony Simpson. Okay, bring it up, bring it up, bring it up. Third round, once more, Marvin Hagler seemingly in control, but Tony Simpson is right there. He hasn't gone anywhere. We don't want to remind you, of course, that World Championship Boxing here on HBO continues live Friday, March 18th. This should be a great one. Ray Leonard, Larry Merchant, and myself will be ringside when undefeated WBA champion Michael Spinks battles it out with WBC champion Dwight Braxton. It's the light heavyweight unification fight. You will not want to miss it. It's live on HBO right here Friday, March 18th. Speed looks nice, man. Hands up high. Keep yourself nice and tight. Okay. No problem. What do you want? Good. Oh, you're looking good, man. You got good speed. You're controlling the fight. There you go. You're confusing the hell out of me. Right? Get that jab looking fake. Okay, man. Timmy steps in. Pop. Get on your right side, man. This the fourth round. You heard Marvin Hagler's corner say essentially, in fact specifically, just do what you're doing. You got him confused. Do you agree with that? Well, I think he uh, he's keeping uh, Simpson off balance in a sense, but not really confused. That the movement that uh, Hagler has, and also by being a softball, it creates a few problems for Simpson. Good right hand, another left hand by Hagler, but Simpson keeps coming. Wild left hand by Tony Simpson. Well, Simpson proved he can take a punch. I mean, Hagler's been landing some big bombs on his chin. I think what Hagler should try to do now is see how the body is. Go downstairs a couple times. A little bit of blood from the nose of Tony Simpson. Hagler always seems to fight a thinking man's fight. This is no exception. Short right hand. Well, you notice now, Hagler's fighting orthodox. He's, he's fighting the correct way. Nice back to southpaw. I, 
cut of Tony Simpson seems to be alongside the nose, not from the nose. Alongside the left side of his nose. Hagler works on it, too. There's that jab you were talking about. That, that right jab of Hagler is very, very powerful. And once again, Hagler's back to orthodox. And all of a sudden, he'll change back, back to South Park. Now, that's confusing, especially if you're good at it. Hagler is good at it. Hagler, good short right hand. Right here, you have the feeling that Marvin Hagler feels he has this fight won. Well, not really. I don't. I, if I'm in a fight like this, and rough guy, I'm hitting with the best shots, I think, I mean, I'm very confident I will win, but uh, you got to stay on your toes. This is a thinkers man game. Oh, Still blood from the nose of Tony Simpson. That was a good body shot by Tony Simpson. He went to the head with the left hook and came back with a good left hook to the body. Simpson corner. There's no cut on Simpson, it's bleeding wow. from his nose. Simpson's corner is complaining about the high body piece and cup that Hagler is wearing. Let's take a look at the right. You saw a right hand that's coming in there and bloodying Simpson's nose right there. A good right jab of Hagler. One of the best right jabs you've ever okay. seen from the southpaw. Hagler comes right out, weighing with the right hand, missed with it. Simpson so far, no reason to hang his head. Takes a good left hand. Again, that's not the same right jab I was talking about earlier that Hagler has. Good left hook by Tony Simpson just now. Simpson right on top of Hagler for the moment, but doing no visible damage. And takes a good straight right hand that time from Hagler. And again, blood to the nose. Two more right hands. What's happening? Hagler's throwing his punches in the combination. Simpson's relying on pretty much one punch. And that's the mistake he's making. Oh, oh, Inside, Hagler puts his punches together. And Simpson, he works either the left hand or the right hand. He needs to put both hands together. And again, Hagler dusts him with that right hand. A little short on that left hook by Simpson. What Simpson could do also, very store, a couple lead off right hands. That's a good punch on the southpaw, against the southpaw level. Well, he just threw one just now. And again, that snapping right hand jab by Marvin okay, Hagler. No holding, no holding. Bring it up, bring it up. Goes to right hand, but again, now back to left hand. What a jab. Brilliant jab by Marvin Hagler. Boom! Oh, okay, hurry up. Hurry up. And 
Simpson gets inside and starts banging away with the champion. Simpson now cut alongside the eye. And that one is pretty nasty. Now and you'll see Marvin Hatley work on him. Uh, the same right there. Above the left eye of Tony Simpson. That one could be very troublesome. Well, you see now Simpson's really become even more aggressive because there's a sign of desperation in his eyes. Fearing that the fight will be stopped on the cut. That cut is a nasty one. We'll try to get a good look at it between rounds and see if it's above the eye or alongside the eye. If it's above the eye, obviously it is much more dangerous. That was a good combination by Simpson there. Simpson had reportedly never been cut in a fight before. Marvin Hagler cuts practically every fighter that he goes against. There you see that damaging right jab. Two strong right jabs. Jabs that just snap Simpson's head back. A third one. Here you're going to get a, a view of the distance and how Hagler measures his man, steps in, and plants his lead foot with his right jab right behind it. You're seeing a masterful exhibition, really, of hitting the other guy and not letting the other guy hit you. <laughs> really is a boxing lesson. The cut looks to be alongside the left eye. It doesn't look at this moment to threaten the end of the fight. The eye is very swollen in addition to being cut. Almost certainly will close before too long. Marvin Adler goes right for it. What a boxing exhibition you're seeing from the champion tonight. Hagler, to me, Ray, just seems to be getting better with every fight. Oh, yes, he's, he's more experienced, and, uh, I mean, he is a, a great generalship. He has all of that. He knows the ring. He knows how to use it. He knows how to use his hands, the, the body, the head. He's an all-around fighter. It's only now that he's really starting to be recognized for being the fighter that he is. As a matter of fact, back in 1973, Joe Frazier said to him, you got three strikes against you. You're a softball, you're black, and you're good. And there is a booming left hand behind a right hand by Marvin Hagler. Well, those three strikes seem to be turned into a home run right now. Well, those three okay, strikes have become a motivated motivating factors for Hagler because, again, he's a very proud champion, and to try to take his title away from him is like trying to take a, a, a little puppy from a dog. Another good jolting left hand, and now there is blood apparently from the bridge of the nose right up alongside that left eye. The eye, the eye, uh, left oh, eye is starting to give him a lot of trouble because the blood now is starting to soak into his eyes and oh, blur his oh, vision. Oh, oh. Carlos Padilla takes a good look at that. There is a cut along, seems to be right at the bridge of the nose, a combination of punches by Hagler. Simpson fights back. Hagler tags him with the right, and another right behind an uppercut. Hagler right back on his man now, sensing that he has him hurt, has him hurt. And down goes Tony Simpson. His cut flipped and, uh, his protector is, is loose. And Carlos Padilla should step in here and try to fix the equipment. Simpson right on Marvin Hagler once again. Still plenty of time left in this round. Hagler trying to finish it off right here. A jolting right hand, a looping right hand by Hagler. And another. Simpson stands toe to toe. He's down, and this should be it. Padilla sends him to the neutral corner. Simpson is on his feet. And that's all. That is all. To say that Marvin Hagler was impressive would be to make a great understatement. It would be an understatement. Marvin Hagler, marvelous Marvin Hagler, he showed so much of boxing uh, techniques that... Uh, I'm quite sure that those that are, the opponents that are looking at him now have been intimidated. Tony Simpson was dead game, no question about that. Did everything he could. Well, as Tony Simpson deserves a lot of credit. I mean, he fought 
like a hell of a line, but it was just too little for Hagler. Hagler just had too much artillery for him. Two minutes and 40 seconds of the sixth round. Not yet official, but it's really a moot point at this juncture. Marvin Hagler in the arms of the Petronelli brothers. And here's another look at it, Ray. This is the first knockdown. Well, Hagler here, he, he's on the attack, and Simpson still a little dazed from that early barrage of punches. And fatigue and the attack, the accumulation of punches that uh, he received from Marvin Hagler. And that put Tony Simpson on the seat of his pants. Here's a shot from great camera angle up above, and it just gives you a good idea of just how on balance Marvin Hagler is. Well, here you can appreciate the punch and power of Marvin Hagler as he attempts, he connects with that right left hook to the top of the head of Charlie Simpson. And you saw him get that left foot back before he threw the punch just to get the leverage into it. Very good balance. Hagler keeps his balance and always very good leverage behind his punches. So Marvin Hagler retains his championship, and I think it's safe to say we've done four or five of Marvin Hagler's fights here on HBO, and I think it's a fair statement to make that Tony Simpson might have been the toughest customer in there with Marvin Hagler. And see, that's the reason why guys in the boxing careers knock the opponents that Hagler fight. Hagler defeats everyone, all the top contenders, and these guys deserve shots. Let's take a look now at the second and what turned out to be the last knockdown. And again, it was an accumulation of punches, Ray. Well, Hagler wore down Simpson with a barrage of punches to the body to the head. That overhand right there, Day Simpson, you see him, he's just there, a stationary target. Hagler takes advantage of it, so Simpson goes down once again. You know, I'm just continually amazed as we look at that angle from up top. Look at the leverage, the right hand to the top, the back of the head. Start to say I'm continually amazed at how few punches Marvin Hagler misses. Well, he doubled up on the right hand, Barry. He was coming back with the third right hand. Simpson was already down. Once again, that overhand right land. Simpson, knees buckle. He's ready to go to any time. And Hagler takes advantage of it. A little bit of chaos going on in the ring as a well-wisher gets a little bit over-exuberant. Hagler, meanwhile, remaining very calm, unmarked. Gets a hug. He is just all business. He never underestimates an opponent. Takes things very seriously. Says, and I think it's safe to say he's right, that he's a much better fighter since he's become the champion of the world. He showed it once again tonight. You just can't take anything away from Marvin Hagler. You can. All you can do is appreciate and give this man more credit than they have been given him. Because he's displaying not only sportsmanship, because he did walk, he walked over and shook the hand of the uh, beaten fighter. And he also displays his talent. Well, fighting before the hometown fans once again, it is a fight that, as we mentioned, was sold out within 24 hours of the announcement that the fight would be here. Right now, the champion, Marvin Hagler, is with Larry Merchant. Larry, you got it. He went in against a British fighter who had a reputation as a good puncher, a better puncher than you. Well, I tried to move away from his left hook. I realized that was a big punch. You know, I've been in there with some of the great fighters, you know. And right now, I'm starting to believe I am the greatest middleweight of all time. I wanted to bring this recognition to the middleweight. Now I have to start giving myself credit, because I beat a hell of a fighter here today. When you say you're the best middleweight of all time, that's that's for other people to decide. But it, it suggests that you really feel, I feel that you're that a better fighter. I'm getting than... better all the time with every fight. And uh, you know, when I'm finished with this game, that's the way I want to go down in history. All right, we're going to take a look at the knockdown on the fight here momentarily. But Marvin, the, the thing that I notice here, let's take a look from above, and you describe the action for us. Well, he's very dangerous with his head. You know, I don't know how many times the referee warned him, but I was shooting right-handed. I think I was switching a lot in there. It really was confusing him. And my right hand was so effective, I just pounded him down to the ground. Did you realize that he had, that his equipment had come apart in that round, and well, he seemed he like he was going to be apart. embarrassed? He started falling apart after the first round. He realized that he was in there with a better boxer, a better puncher, no, no, no and uh, it was just uh, trying to take the play away from him. One of the things I noticed is that you're so patient that in the early rounds, you didn't want to even let him land any punches until you had him worn down. Exactly. You know, I figured I'd take some of the power out of him the same way I did with Fulio Bell, because you never know what these guys got in store for you. He's a hell of a fighter. He's a dangerous puncher. So you can't take chances did in it, there. Did at any time did you feel a sense of his power? Sure, I got caught with a good shot, I think, maybe in the first or second round, maybe. But uh, then after that, I figured that was his best shot, and I was more or less voiding him to, for him to come and do some more of them. So I know if he can hit me, I can sure enough hit him. First, I'd like to thank God, really, for giving me the courage and uh, for carrying me all the way up to the top. He gave me the, the inspiration and the dedication 
and everything to, what to keeps keep this you, drive going. What keeps you so ambitious after having achieved your ambition of being a champion? I believe that I want to prove to the world that I am one of the greatest. I think Monzon was the last great middleweight champion. And when I'm done with this game, I would like to go down in history as the same way. Thank you very much, Now Martin. I'm getting ready for Animal Frank Fletcher, because I'm the monster. He's the animal, but I'm the monster. But you've always had problems with Philadelphia fighters, and he's a Philadelphia fighter. Well, you know, the same no, thing with the British. Sign. Now maybe they're sicking him on me, so now what I got to do is destroy Philly. But, uh, you know, I know they're going to get him ready in every kind of way, the same way they did to Tony Simpson, but uh, I took my part in every kind of way I could. Thank you very much, Marvin. My Congratulations. I'd like to say thanks for HBO for giving me the biggest credit of my life for following me and giving me my biggest opportunities. I should like to add this as a parting word to our viewers, which is that in some quarters, I suppose, this fight will be viewed as a mismatch. We've heard that no, term thrown around. That. We've heard that term <laughs> turned around, Marvin. But if you, you eliminated no all mismatches, then Marvin Hagler would have nobody to fight. And Sugar Ray Robinson would have had about 12, want, 12 right fights now. in his life instead of 200. There's, we want the animal to come up with the money. That's all we want. Somebody once said that the whole world is a mismatch, and certainly in this ring, anybody who fights Marvin Hagler, it is a mismatch. Back to ringside. Okay, thank you very much, Larry Merchant and the champion, still the champion, marvelous Marvin Hagler. Just to echo some of those thoughts that Larry and Marvin were just talking about, the fact that people keep saying that it's just another guy and he's really not the caliber of competition that Marvin Hagler should have. Well, if he isn't, Tony Simpson, then who is? It was a very tough kid he fought tonight. There only takes one word to describe Marvelous Marvin Hagler. Awesome. I don't think there's any question about that. We walked by Steve Wainwright, the lawyer in Marvin Hagler's camp, just coming down here to do this portion of the show, and he said he's learned how to box, hasn't he? Well, I tell you, I thought he could box before. Well, I knew Hagler. See, Hagler is a versatile fighter. I mean, he can change up at any given moment. He can box, punch, slug. He has all the qualifications for a champion, as he is. The thing is, of course, where does he go from here? He gets the animal, Fletcher, next. Now people will say, well, he's going to be his toughest opponent. They were saying Tony Simpson was going to be his toughest opponent before this one. Well, Animal Fletcher is a tough guy. I mean, real tough, top contender, worthy challenger for the middleweight crown. And uh, I'm quite sure he's watching. He wants Hagler. It's going to be a good fight. All right. Well, you saw the middleweight championship tonight. You're going to be seeing an awful lot more here on HBO. We are going to have the unification. But we had a good one tonight, too. You know, people keep saying, as we said, that it's just another face. You know, well, Tony Simpson was another face tonight, and he was vanquished just like everybody else. At some point, you have to look at Marvin Hagler and say, this guy is the champion. This guy is number one. This guy may be in the top five of the best middleweights ever. Oh, I would agree. I would support that uh, fact that he's in the top five. In fact, I get to appreciate the artistry, the determination, and desire to win at all times. Larry Merchant, this is the time that we talk about closing comments and kind of try to put a period or an exclamation point to a fight. And I rather think that Marvin Hagler did that all by his lonesome tonight. Yes, and appropriately, because I think he's coming to that point near where Ray Leonard was, which is that we all just like to watch a consummate professional work uh, to raise his craft almost to an art. Uh, I've been thinking watching this that there are parts of 10 colleges in this little town and if they turn out any graduates that have his skill, determination, artistry, uh, they'll be doing a good job. He's a great athlete. The catch-all question, of course, where do you put him in the great scheme of the middleweights down the line? Well, that remains to be seen. He's, if he's indeed 28 years old, he's got a lot of years ahead of him. But I think he is the best middleweight champion since Monzon. Uh, where he gets in the, uh, into the, the starlight remains. Uh, it's a little early, but we don't see anybody out there right now who can uh, give him serious problems, uh, perhaps Hearns and perhaps Benitez at the end of this year or early next year. Ray Leonard, it's going to be obvious that people are going to start talking now. If Marvin Hagler is really that good, he's got to fight Sugar Ray Leonard. Your response to it, you're going to be asked it, obviously, a thousand times. Well, I'm with HBO. I'm history. As far as boxes, because I'm history. You know what I mean? Marvin Hagler still thinks, he says, Ray Leonard's going to watch me fight a few times and come back this summer. No, well, to reiterate on what Larry said, I mean, guys like Tommy Hearns and Wilfred Benitez, those guys he can fondle with. I mean, really. Those are the guys, of course, that Marvin Hagler has in the offing right now.
right now. It's been said that Marvin Hagler is the main event in an arena of faceless challengers. Whether or not that is true, he has handled every one of those people, faceless or with a face. He has taken care of everybody that's come down the line. There's no question Marvin Hagler is number one. He must be considered amongst the top middleweights in history. So for Sugar Ray Leonard and Larry Merchant, I'm Barry Tompkins. We'll see you on March 18th at HBO from Atlantic City and the unification fight for the light heavyweight championship. Be sure to tune in Friday, March 18th, for that unification fight. WBC champion Dwight Braxton battling WBA champion Michael Spinks. It could be the fight of the year. It'll be live 10 o'clock Eastern, 9 o'clock Central, and 8 o'clock Pacific time right here on HBO. So, for Larry Merchant and Sugar Ray Leonard, I'm Barry Tompkins saying so long for the Centrum in Worcester, Massachusetts, where once again marvelous Marvin Hagler has defeated Tony Simpson with 2 minutes and 40 seconds gone in the sixth round. This show was produced by Ross Greenberg and directed by Mark Payton. The associate producers are Rick Bernstein and Linda Jackson.